God says, wait a minute, back up. Wait a minute, back up. Wait a minute, back up. I'm just trying to read through. Wait a minute, back up. You need to read that again. Kind of read it five times. Read it again. Read it again. Slow down and read it. What does it say? Not what the words are. What does it say? So if you have your Bible, turn with Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And I promise you I won't keep you a real long time. I know there's a football game going on and folks are already on the phones looking and trying to see what the story is. But, yeah. Oh, don't look like that. That never happens. Okay. <laughs> Stand up here every now and then and look at what people are doing. Amen. Uh, take care of what I got a receipt for you. Um, <laughs> hey, Amen. We'll talk to you for just a few minutes tonight. And I, and I listen, my heart is very troubled. And I, about what I was speaking about earlier, and um, you know, I don't know if you guys don't think I can read. If I don't have Facebook, if I'm not, if I'm not smart enough to work it, I mean, I, I don't mean not, just because I'm not on it all the time, post stuff. I mean, I don't have, I don't have to read. It's stuff people post. It's stuff people share. I don't care if your friends share it or not. To share that cussing mess. I know I'm an old relic from the past, and I don't believe in cussing, drinking, smoking Christians. I know I'm an old relic from the past. I, I don't believe in living like hell and go to heaven. I know that. That's just, that's just my deal. I just feel like that's what the Lord told us to do: was live right and be right, do right, be righteous and holy in His eyes, and not in our own eyes. I just feel like that we, we're supposed to do what we're supposed to do. And, and let the world do what they do. And we're supposed to be a different maker. We're supposed to be a world changer. Not a world conformist. But a world changer. But as we're leading, as we're leading worship, and, and this is not a, a slap at anybody, I'm not saying anything. But as we're leading worship, I, I don't go I don't go blind. I mean I, I can still I can see words and keys and still see you. It's an amazing thing, and my eyes work. Okay, it's an amazing thing. So I can see the wall on both sides. Looking straight, I can see the wall on both sides. Yeah. I'm my peripheral vision. I can see the both televisions. My eyes work. I can see. Okay? I can't see close up without my glass with my glasses on. <laughs> with my glasses on, I gotta take my glasses off, see close up. I know it's stupid, but it's like but I but, but they work. And during worship, and we're, and we're, and we're, and we're singing, and there was at least three or four people that had to go to the bathroom. You're going to do something else. I'm going to start to slap it. You know, you got to go to the bathroom. I'd rather you go to the bathroom than make a mess in the car. Okay? Do what you need to do. Okay? That's fine. That's fine. But something's missing, people. Something's, a, something's askew in the spirit. Something's not working right. Something is amiss, if you will. Something is just not as it should be. I, I look, you know, and I, I know you guys get tired of me talking about foreign countries and what they do and all that stuff because we don't live there and that's fine. But did anybody see, speaking of Facebook, did anybody see the church in Central America that was flooded and the and the, few, and the pews were full of people? Did you anybody see that? And then, then I think the caption was, what's your excuse? And I was like, well, I would share that on the television screen, but I'd get an ugly letter under my door. <laughs> And you guys understand that that doesn't really happen. I'm just using, uh, that's just a joke, okay? I've had several people say, do people really do that? No, no one's really done that. It's just a joke, okay? Now, they may now, because I said that, but they didn't used to, okay? And so, I understand this. I'm just, I'm just kidding with you about a uh, letter in my door. And the reason, where that came from is because Jesse DePlanet, she said, oh, send me no ugly letter, I'm not going to read it. And that's where that came from. So, okay, okay? And so, hear me for just a second. 
I'll try not to bore you. Dean's already gone and he's tired. <laughs> <laughs> he's tired. Okay? He's had a long day. And so, uh, this, this, help me out for just a minute, please. Something's amiss, or something's astray, something's just not right in the spirit. The Holy Ghost doesn't seem to be able to penetrate us. And I don't know if it's we're desensitized, as David said during their prayer meeting, maybe we're desensitized, maybe we're just used to to the move of the Holy Ghost. Maybe we're, and then listen, I don't want you to be afraid to get up and just going to say something about it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying there's got to be, listen, there's, I looked at one point, everybody's standing up and only James had a hand in the air. One person. Now, I'm not saying you're not worshiping. Then I noticed Kwaki in his belly. I'm just pointing you out. I'm making them super Christians. I'm just, Okay. Because I don't want to hear nobody say, well, they just said that. Okay. Here. So, I said all that to say this. Somehow we've missed the mark. And I'm, I'm just as guilty as you. Somehow we're not praying like we should pray or doing something that we should do. We're all fatter than we should be. So uh, none of us are missing meals. None of us are fasting. Come on. All of us are, I'm going to say all of us, because the thing is I'll do myself. The majority of us, the majority of us are, some of us are, whatever you want to say are, not missing meals. Because I don't want to, if you are fasting, thank God for you fasting. But we used to do two or three days at a time, and now we do two hours at a time, and we're about to die. And we'll put it off to the side because the devil has said somebody about, hey, we'll go get ice cream. Sure, let's go. <laughs> I'll fast later. Yeah. 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 Because you don't think the devil will do that? Of course he'll do that. They've never taken you for ice cream ever in their lives, and then you want to fast and take you ice cream. That's the truth. Nothing will happen. Listen, they'll show up. Listen, you decide to fast this week, you know what's going to happen? They'll have donuts at work tomorrow. <laughs> Remember? Free lunch. I'll bring, they'll cater something for you. Something will happen. And you have to make a decision. I'll fast again tomorrow. I fasted, I fasted breakfast. You don't ever eat breakfast anyway. Okay? Fasted breakfast. I, I know. I'll have a light supper. I'll have a juice or something. Come on. I won't preach it, brother. <laughs> so I want to talk to you for a minute about we have missed some things. Number one, how many of you are here have been saved longer than 25 years? How many have been filled with the Holy Ghost longer than that? 25 years or so. Okay. Have been speaking with them? Okay. Great. How about 20 years? 15? 10, 5, 4? Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Okay, how many have been saved and, and, and you are the watchman on the tower? Amen. How many know that you are the watchman? Yes. You are responsible, and I, and the, you and me, us, we and yuns, okay, are responsible for what walks in this door. That's the preacher, y'all quit talking. Okay. We are responsible for what spirit walks in that door and allows you to come in here and manifest itself. We're the watchmen. We are the watchmen on the tower. Oh, I don't want to offend anybody. Do you wonder if the guy that got the devil cast out of him laying on this floor right here slid up like a snake? I was offended. And we talked about that in prayer meeting too. When people say, when Brother Ford was saying, if you ain't praying, you better start praying because the devil's going somewhere and it might go in you. <laughs> Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> when he got set free. Yeah. I doubt it. Yeah. I wonder if George was offended when that junk came out of her mouth and landed on the Bible and disappeared. I wonder if she was offended. <coughs> See, I'm not talking about stuff I've heard about. Right. Seen it. Yes. And you don't think that don't freak a 12-year-old kid out. Amen. You don't forget stuff like that. 
And I was about six or five years old when the guy slid it up like a snake. You don't forget that stuff. You don't forget church camp and kids with eyes rolling up in their head spitting slobber and Whoa! You don't forget that goosebump. You don't forget that stuff. But we are the watchmen, women and men, on the tower. We are responsible for what spirits we allow to manifest themselves in the church. We are those. God has given trust and God has given responsibility over the body of Christ because I'm just telling you right now that there are some that sit here that know nothing about Pentecost. They know nothing about the presence of God. They know nothing about spiritual warfare. They know nothing about it. And we are the ones that God has put in this place to be watchmen over God's people. So somehow, some way, we've lost our way which causes things to manifest that should never manifest. A sexual spirit manifesting itself in a church. Well, how do you find that? You follow the bouncing ball, if you will. Y'all don't know those cartoons. That's how I learned how to spell Mississippi. Watching one of those cartoons. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. By watching one of those cartoons and following the bouncing ball. So anytime I need to spell Mississippi, that comes to my head. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. Following the bouncing ball on a black and white cartoon. But somehow, some way, we have allowed the devil to trick us into thinking that it is not our responsibility to let every man work on his own salvation. That is true. However, it is also true, and I told you this morning, that we are to train and to teach those that don't know anything about the Spirit of the Lord, what the Spirit of the Lord is all about. Amen. We're to train and to teach how to worship God. Amen. I can't get on to you too hard when people that have been in church for 35, 40, 50 years are worshiping either. I can't, I can't get on you too bad. Amen. I can't, I can't point fingers at you and tell you, you ought to do what ain't nobody else doing. Amen. I can't point fingers at you and say you ought to do this and with your giving. Never mind. Okay, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And what I mean by that is some of us have been given a dollar in Sunday school for 25 years. I don't know if you know this or not, but things cost more than they did 25 years ago. Amen. Well, that's good preaching, Brother Jeff. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Because it's the truth. If you want to stay dollar given, then, get, then just stay dollar given. I thank God for the dollar. Because I'll bless it and turn it into a hundred. But I just want you to understand that, that if you want to go to another level, you got to do something to get that other level. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Ready? Yes. And the Lord took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Time out. <coughs> well, where was it before? It wasn't in the garden, was it? And God took him and placed him in the garden. God made Adam outside the garden and then took him and put him in the garden. You with me? Come on with me now. Everybody thinks that Adam and Eve just always lived in... I should say it. Most people think that everybody... That, that, that the people... The people... I'm just messing up. But people think that, that God took... Just, they always lived in Eden. That's not true. Because God created Adam outside of Eden and placed him in Eden. And from Eden, he, he, he made all the animals. And he, played, and he brought them before uh, Adam and said, and said, Adam, name them all. And Adam from, listen to me, listen to me. Out of Eden came all the animals of the earth. Adam did not come from Eden. He came from an outside source and was placed in Eden. Come on, somebody. Help me just a minute. So here, can I just share with you just a minute? All you folks that are new to this place, and you've been, on, been here about four or five years or whatever, you were created someplace else and God placed you here. Amen. And God had a man, listen, come on somebody, Amen. God had somebody in place that was supposed to teach you the things and the rules of the Garden of Eden. Amen. Adam, was not supposed to, Adam was not supposed to just say, well, whatever you want to do is fine. He was to teach the animals where they live. He was supposed to do everything he was supposed to do. And Eve came from where? 
I'm glad you asked. We're going to read it. 2 and 21. 2 and 21. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Where was she taken from? Man. man. She wasn't created outside of Eden. She was created in Eden. She was not created out of the dirt. She was created out of the dirt, made into a form of a man. And his name was Adam and her name was Eve. And he created her out of him. Okay. And she, God brought her to him and he said, Woo! She's naked and I ain't ashamed. Okay? Well, that's what the Bible said. Is that what he said? That's what he said. He may not have said it like that, but that's what he said. Okay? Okay. But he's like, Woo! She is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And God said, Amen. Amen? Yeah. So here we go. Fast forward. Okay. Fast forward. The serpent comes to Eve from outside of the garden. From outside of the garden comes an intruder. That Adam had not instructed Eve how to deal with. Get with me. Adam said, you can do everything, you can eat anything you want, but don't touch that tree in the middle. So that's all she knew. He didn't tell her, now listen, I've been in this garden for a while. I named all these animals, and there's that thing called a serpent. That thing is slick. You need to deal with him this way. I rebuke you in the name of God. Get away from me. You have no power, no authority over me. Shut your mouth and get away from me. You are under my feet. and not under Listen, uh, he, he did not instruct her in how to deal with the serpent. He just, he just let her to her own devices in the garden because the garden was beautiful and there was nothing there to hurt, he thought. But something came from outside of the garden and placed itself in the garden and began to speak to somebody who did not come from the outside but was now made in the inside. <laughs> Quacky and Isabel, how long y'all been coming to church here now? Year now. They got saved here. In, in here. You hear me? You, you with me? They got, church, they got saved here. They're ours. They belong to us. They're our, our children. Gary, how long you been coming? About a year? About, I don't know. How long you guys been coming? Stacy, about a year? Yeah, like I say it's here. You're ours. You belong to us. It is our responsibility, Adams, to teach them how to deal with the serpent that comes into their lives and tries to wreak havoc upon their lives. And show them how to deal with the with the saint with the serpent. Because I'm telling you, Quacky, the serpent gonna come and try to destroy something in your life. Oh, Gary, the serpent's gonna come and try to destroy something. In your life. Zane, the devil will come in any kind of form he can and try to and, then, and try to destroy your life. But hear me for just a minute, if you would, please yeah. understand this. Adam formed outside; Eve was formed inside the garden. And when she fell, Adam said, "This woman that you gave me, hold the bus." Pump the brakes, Adam. I brought it. I brought her to you. You called her by name. You called her what she was. You said this is what she's going to be. And I just blessed what you said. I didn't form her. I made her out of your rib. But I brought her to you. And you're the one named her. You're the one that caused her to be who she is. Let's read it. I gotta read it. Let's read it. 22. 21. Let's start with 21. Gotta read it. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, 
I'm, I'm born Lisa. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her to where? And Adam said what? This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. God just said amen, amen. to what Adam said. God just blessed what Adam said. Adam called her by name. Adam called her what she would be. Yeah. Knew where she came from. Knew that she did not come from the outside, but she came from the inside. Not only the inside of the garden, but the inside of him. Yeah. She, he knew everything about Eve. Right. Because he, if you will, birthed her out of his rib. You, you with me? Yeah. The folks that have gotten saved under this ministry for the last five years have been... One here, their lives are here, have been birthed, if you will, from here. They are ours to take care of. They are ours to show how to live for God and how to, how to work for God. They are ours to know how to live a life, a Christian life. And for us to say, well, they need to work out their own salvation is to say, Adam said, well, she needs to figure out how to deal with the serpent herself. Can I share with you that there's a slick serpent going to come into your life and you got to learn how to deal with him. And where are my mothers and where are my fathers to tell somebody how to deal with something in their lives? Where are my mothers to say, baby, you need to respect your husband and quit talking about him to everybody? Where are my fathers to say, baby, you better treat your wife good or she's going to leave you and she got every right to leave you? Where are they? Where are my men of God? Come on, somebody. There was a time. When someone would get hold of a young man or a young woman. And not their parent. But somebody in the church. Would get hold of them. And say, baby, you can't flip your wrist like that. You need to walk up and like, be like a, be a man. Y'all get mad at me if you want. There was a time when women would get hold of the younger women. I said, baby, you just can't date everybody. You just can't be going with any old body, any old Joe that said that winks at you and wants to buy you a steak. But now we're afraid that the parents are going to get mad at us and they probably will. Who are you to tell my daughter? I'm just trying to keep her from being pregnant. I'm just trying to keep her from getting hooked up with a serpent. I'm just trying to keep, listen, that a certain, listen there was a time when we would go to the preacher and say, I think I'm going to marry Naomi. And Brother Charles said, I knew that. And you didn't know that. I didn't stand there six months ago. You didn't know that. There was a time when we would go to the preacher and say, I think, I, I think I'm going to marry her. Now we marry people and just bring them to the preacher and say, would you fix this knot? Yeah. Would you help me now because now I'm in trouble? Yeah. Okay. Y'all yeah. want to slap oil on your head and pray that bread off of you. That's not, that's not how it works, baby. That's not how it works. You have to watch the serpent as it comes in. And somebody got to be watching for, that, for snakes and devils. Yeah. Somebody got to be watching. Somebody got to be on the watchtower looking at the guard and saying, snake! Snake coming. Somebody get a hole and chop that thing up. Throw it in a sack. Bury the head. Chop that thing in little bitty pieces like the cats can't even eat it. I do, do something with it. Chop. Someone in the a snake. When they see somebody coming into church. This fix that is trying to take care of somebody that doesn't know any better how to deal with a snake. Now listen, I, I've dealt with a lot of snakes in my life. I'm kind of getting better at dealing with snakes. But some folks don't know how to deal with snakes. Amen. They talk to them instead of rebuke them. Right. 
They listen to what they have to say instead of turning the deaf ear. They listen to them. They, they, are, they, are, they are beguiled by them. They, they don't understand some things that go on. And, and the devil begins to deal with their lives. And the next thing you know, all hell breaks loose in their lives. And they don't understand what happened. I'll tell you what happened. Snake. Snake came in your life. But us nice little quiet Christians. Well, I should have, I, I, I could have told them that. Yeah, you could have. You could have told him. Stay away from that girl. Girl ain't no good. You could have told her. He ain't nothing but a snake. He's trying to destroy your life. Listen, hey, look at me. Look at me. How many of you? Come on, girls. Listen, listen. Don't be up. I want you to be honest with me, girls. How many of you have just loved somebody? As soon as you hooked up with them, your life was in a toilet. Boys, as soon, as soon as you hooked, listen, as soon as you hooked up with them, all your life began to go into the pit. You know why? Snake! Snake loose! Someone needs to, someone needs to chop that thing's head off. Boy, it gets quiet when you talk about stuff. Now, I, I know I'm on target because it gets quiet. Boy, it gets quiet. And, and, and so many of our girls and so many of our guys are in such a hurry to get married that they'll just any old snake to come by. Yeah. <laughs> any old snake to come and say, oh, you're cute. Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> any old snake. No matter who it is. Oh, it don't matter who it is. Don't matter if they live a Christian life. Don't matter if they're saved. They're full of the devil. You don't even know. Oh, but he kissed me. Oh, but she kissed me. Keep your mouth off me. Remember that, Ben? Get away from people. What's wrong with you? Get away from people. What's wrong with you? I'm sure I'm going to take a sword or a fever blister. <laughs> Snake! But we are the ones that are responsible, our elders, to see a snake and call it what it is. Understand who it is and what it is. I don't care if your daughter and your son gets mad at you. They'll thank you. They'll thank you when it's over with and all the shouting and the crying is done and old boy's gone down the road where he needs to be. <laughs> They'll thank you. Because I'd rather have, listen, I would rather have the right one and wait a while than have the wrong one time after time again. That my life was a living hell inside and out because I let a snake slither into my life. Amen. Where are my men of God? And where are my women of God? Where are my church mothers? Come on, somebody, I need a church mother. I need, I, I, mm, I need a church mother. I need someone to say, baby, you need to not do that. And, and I, I, think of, I think of Brother Dean's mother every time I think about that. She didn't mind one bit telling me not, not to do something. And not think nothing. She didn't care if I got mad or not. Huh? I was playing the drums too loud. She didn't mind telling me. She didn't mind telling me that. She didn't mind telling me to look her in the eye when I shook her hand. She didn't mind telling me. I don't know whatever. She, she didn't mind telling me. Did I get mad? Oh yeah. Did I get over it? Yes. I got. I got over it because listen. I didn't say walk up and be mean to somebody. But I said, be a parent, be a man of God, be a woman of God. I said, listen, I know, listen, I know what they look good, but underneath their skin, yeah. they're the devil. Shit, the devil. Yeah. Snake! <laughs> Snake coming! Man. God bless what Adam called her. Adam didn't teach her what to do when a snake came. When things from the outside come into the garden. When things from the outside come into the garden, it is that who is. It, wait, okay. Put it. Give me my scripture back up. Two, what's the first one I gave you? Two fifteen. 
put it, put it up to go to 16. Go back to 15, sorry. I'm trying to get to the right place. Okay, and the Lord God took man and put him into the garden and Eden to what? And he placed you in the church to dress it and to keep it. This thing had better stop being precious to you. This church better stop being precious to you or it's going to go away. Until we begin to take it seriously. It's precious. This place is precious to me. You are precious people to me. I love you. And I don't want to see anything bad happen to you. I want, I want only blessing in your life. But until we start taking this thing seriously and we start taking, taking care of this place and dressing it and keeping it like it's important. This is our garden that God has placed us in to keep and to dress. This is the this is the place that we're supposed to keep the snake out. You notice now listen, 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 please understand what I'm telling you. I don't know what the time period was between Adam being placed in the garden and, and Eve being burnt outside of Adam's rib. I don't know what that I don't know what that time period was but before the snake came and how many times did the did the snake come to Adam and Adam ran the snake off? I don't know how many times that was. But there came a time when the snake said, I can't get anywhere with Adam, I'm gonna go to Eve. Because he's been maybe running her up, running off the snake, I don't know. And then all of a sudden he came to her. And she listened to him. I don't know what the time period was. Nobody knows. But outside of the garden, Adam was created. Inside of the garden, Eve was created. This woman that you gave me. Come on, somebody. This, 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 this church that you gave me, they don't understand God. Listen, hear me. Hear me. We have got to be the keepers and the dressers of this place. We've got to understand that this place is a precious, holy place. It's a place where our lives are changed. It's a place that will keep your children right. It's a place that will keep you right. It's a place that will protect your marriage. It's a place that will give you health. It will give you wealth. Yeah. Understand what you have. Yeah. 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 You don't have just a meeting room for a bunch of people to come. Man. This is a place that's a life-changing, world-changing place. That'll transform every place, every part of your life. But you've got to hold it precious. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes, amen. Snake. Yeah. Snake coming. Yeah. We've got to understand that it's not just simply about coming to church and leaving and living like hell during the week and coming back to church and leaving. Yeah. It's got to be precious to us. Yeah. Genesis 3 and 1. Genesis 3 and 1 and I'll leave you alone. Then the serpent was more subtle than the beast of the field. Of the what? Field. Not the beast of the garden. Beast of the field. Which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. Listen. That beast came from the field. The field. And he walked in began to speak. He had the audacity to speak to God's creation. Now if you think the devil's not brash and bold, if you think the devil's not just absolutely insane with hatred for you, you look what happened and you follow this past week. A man walks into a bank and shoots a 64-year-old man because he's in his way trying to rob a bank with money. One of the ladies they interviewed on the news, I don't know who she was, she's a business owner in New Fall in town. She says, I'm just so angry that this man had the audacity to come and shoot this man who was involved in our community, who was well loved. 64 year old bank president, you know he's looking forward to retirement. I pray his soul was saved. Because he retired in a much better place if it was than where he thought he was going to retire. My, my heart breaks for his family. 64 years old gets younger all the time. That's just 17 years. That's just 17 years. 64 gets younger all the time. And for somebody to have the audacity to come in and shoot that man. 
The devil is brazen. He'll walk right into this church. He'll walk right through that door. He'll come set himself right beside you and try to get you to listen to his little spiel about did, not, did God not say you could eat of every tree of the garden? And what we need is the men and women of God that say, Snake! Snake coming! <coughs> Out! You lying devil. Talk to you this morning about our children. Not my personal children, but our children out here. There's not one of those kids that the meth industry has not touched in civil alcohol. Drug, alcohol, violence. Parent leaving wife for the other sister. Oh yeah. You guys have no clue. How does this trade wise? Okay, let's do this. You think I'm kidding, but that's the truth. I'm not telling you who it is because it's not your business. But I know. I know. Really? Well, why won't they sit, why won't Johnny sit down? Have you lost your mind? Well, it's a mystery, isn't it? It's a mystery why Johnny won't sit down. Johnny's so tore up and in turmoil. He did good to get on. He did good to get on the van. He did good to get off the van and go get something to eat and go to school today. He did. He did good just to get up and get some clothes on and not lose his mind today. <coughs> And we think kids are like that were in the 70s. Maybe it ain't like that anymore. With your little frilly things on your bicycle and your banana seat and your basket on it. That ain't happening no more, baby. You know? Hello World is a song that we're singing. Come on, get happy. Partridge family. Y'all are right. All right, sir. Okay? Okay? It's not like that anymore. It's just not. And we expect our... Adults to act like they're supposed to act when they grew up in a whole lot of mess. And we can't figure out why they don't act right. Well, it's not that hard to figure out. It's because they don't know. And we don't have church mothers and church fathers teaching like I got taught about the things of God. Because nobody's on snake patrol. Garden full of snakes. Because you let one snake get in without taking care of the snake problem, pretty soon you'll have a house full of snakes eating away at you. Poverty is like a rat. What do you mean it's like a rat? Poverty is like a rat. It'll find a little crack in your house and slide itself in there and nibble you to death. Before you realize, you got you got a rat, you got a whole house full of rats, and all of them nibbling on everything in your life. Sin, sin, is like a rat. It finds a hole and climbs in, and the next thing you know, you're infested with little nibbles. Those little nibbles become great, huge bites. Yeah. You find yourself in a world of hurt. I just wanted to share some things with you that God has been dealing with me. I, I've read this. I don't know how many times I've read this. And God says, stop. Okay? Read it. Read it. I did read it, God. No. Read it. I read it again. The field, I think the garden, the field, whatever. Yeah, hallelujah. No. The snake, the serpent was not supposed to dwell in the garden. But when he slid in, nobody addressed him as the serpent and took care of the problem. All Adam had to do was that he had dominion over every animal of what? The field. Is that what it says? Every animal of the field he had dominion over or 
domination over, or he had the, had the authority over. And all he had to do was snake out and don't come back. But instead of giving his wife that, that, that information, he didn't handle it. Because if he hadn't been able to handle it, he could have called God and God handled it. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God handled it. You can put it up there if you want to. 3.15. God answered. And I will put enmity between thee and thy woman because, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. God handled it. All the days of your life, you'll, you'll lack no belly. Yes. And eat the dust of the dirt. And God deals with it. We need to deal with some stuff. We need to deal with some snakes. Deal with it. Lovingly. There's a way to approach things. There's a way to approach things. And it's not in the middle of service of the pews. This is the praise dance. That's not the time to handle it. I just, I just look back on how I grew up. I'm not saying that, that the way I grew up was completely right and everything was wonderful and you know puppy dogs and rainbows. I'm not saying that. But when I grew up, people had class. Most people, some people. And they had what do you call it? They were tactful. Most people, not all, not everyone. Most people were tactful. And they would say little. Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? Can I, can I, can I tell you something? And they would talk to you. Now, I, they may not talk to you like that. That's how they talk to me. Maybe nobody ever said anything to you. I don't know. But I had people tell me things. Of course, maybe because I was on the stage since I was 12 years old. I don't know. But I had people tell me stuff. Brother Turner would tell me stuff. But Turner would tell me that you know you can't be all armed up at the, at the restaurant with your girlfriend and you'd be the Sunday school superintendent. You know that, don't you? If I told somebody that, they quit the church. He told me that because somebody said they saw me. Somewhere, I don't remember what. He said, now you know you can't be, you be the Sunday school superintendent, don't you? Yes, sir. Never did it again. Never did it again. Why? Because he was a father to me. A church, spiritual father, church father to me. And tried to tell me, tried to teach me that people see whether you were doing anything wrong or not. See, if, if now, nowadays, though, here, here's what you get. Well, I wasn't doing nothing wrong. He ain't got to tell me what to do. Well, baby, I can't work with you. So I need you to go bless somebody else. Bless us in some other way because if I can't instruct you, then I'm not really your pastor anyway. You need to go find you one that you respect. And you need to go find you one. And I'm not mad at you about it. I'm not upset with you. I just want you to I want you to make heaven your home. My heart goes out to you. I want you to be, I want you to be a blessed person. I want you to be loved and, and appreciated. I, I don't want you to, I'm not mad at you. See, the problem that a lot of folks have is that they think if you don't agree with them, you're mad at them. That's not true. Right. I don't have to be mad at you to disagree with you. Right. And it doesn't mean I don't love you because I don't agree with everything you do. Right. True. I love you regardless. Right. If I think you're being an idiot, I'll just say you're being an idiot and I still love you. <laughs> and if I'm doing the same thing, I expect, I expect the same thing. Yeah. Same thing in return. Right. He's an idiot, but I love him. He's my pastor. He's stupid. But I do love him. You know? Oh, you just have to overlook him. God just bless him. Bless his little heart. Y'all you know? can just bless my little heart all you need to. That's fine. Amen? Just bless my little heart. That's what, that's, that's what my pastor did to me in full. He just, he just told me. He just told me. Can't do that. 
Why? Because it looks bad. Okay? Well, it, it doesn't look bad to me, but for me, I have it represent us. Stand in your feet. 